This video explains the long run average cost curve for a business. Now, long run average cost, LRAC, is drawn on the assumption of there being an infinite number of plant sizes a business can use. And if average cost is falling as output increases, then a business is said to be experiencing economies of scale. A doubling of their inputs of land and labour and capital might lead to a more than doubling of output, increasing returns, and therefore unit cost goes down. Conversely, when average cost eventually starts to rise, then unit costs go up, and we call that diseconomies of scale. And there may be a range of output where long run average cost is constant, and we say that the firm is experiencing constant returns to scale. So in the long run, well, basically each set of short run cost curves relates to a given scale of production. So think about a bakery plant or a car manufacturing, uh, car manufacturing business or maybe a renewable energy supplier. There's a series of short run cost curves, MC1, AC1. And here's a series of uh, lower costs, MC2, AC2. Each of those short run cost curves relates to a given scale of production given combination of labour and capital, with at least one input fixed. But of course, in the long run, the firm can move from one set of cost curves to another. And hopefully, as they do that, their capacity to produce goes up, and so uh, they can achieve greater output, but also that the unit cost of supply may go down, economies of scale. So increased scale of production is essentially a movement from left to right on that diagram. Now, I've only shown two sets of cost curves here. Let me just broaden the analysis out a little bit with three sets of cost curves. So let's consider, for example, this could be a beer maker, it could be a renewable energy producer. Each set of short run cost curves, MC and AC, represents a given quantity of capital and technology available to the firm. But hopefully as they expand their output in the long run, they can bring down the unit cost of production. Now, the long run average cost, shown here by the red dotted line, essentially tries to envelop or just fit around the path of short run average costs. I've only shown three sets of cost curves. There could be many, many more. So the long run average cost curve essentially envelops, uh, fits around those costs, if you can see there. Now, when the average cost is falling, as we, for example, we move from MC1, AC1, to MC2, AC2, when the average costs, when those cost curves are falling, then we have economies of scale, but it may be the case at very high levels of output that the average cost starts to rise. That's diseconomies of scale. So when the long run average cost is declining, we have internal economies of scale, cost advantages from the growth of the business itself. Until you reach the low point of LRAC, which is also known as minimum efficient scale. Beyond that, you may be getting internal diseconomies of scale caused by decreasing returns to scale. For a variety of reasons, the firm may have moved beyond its optimum size. So here's a quick diagram showing that. A long and average cost curve, when it's falling, you have economies of scale. The lowest point, minimum efficient scale, is also the output of productive efficiency. But if average cost starts to rise in the long run, so for example, between Q3 and Q4, then there are diseconomies of scale.